welcome back to Traffico Marine Centre, Colette here. Today's video I'm going to be taking you on a tour around the Essex Coral Farm attached to AAC. Now Paul Hughes is going to be talking to us about sustainability and what he does inside that coral farm. Um, so stay tuned if you want to see all of that and I hope you enjoy the video. I'm going to kick off this tour by thanking Paul and the team at AAC for letting me film around their shop and farm. Now if you missed last week's video you'll probably want to watch that after this video as we toured the full shop and display tanks which are absolutely breathtaking. Now let's get into the farm and see what they've got growing out. Over to Paul Hughes, the owner of AAC and the Essex Coral Farm. So that's where we grow a lot of our soft corals and uh, gonophora and things like that. So it's not all, not all SPS corals at IAC, we do do quite a lot of Gorgonian frags and mm -hmm. we use a lot of these frags, although they're sort of grown out frags, mm -hmm. we actually don't keep a single mother colony, we'll always keep right. multi frags so that we can subdivide from the frags mm -hmm. and of course the more you take frags from frags the better that they're, they're being. Also of course it's space, Yeah. you know we physically couldn't contain all of the corals that we want to contain. No. Um, in, um, if you like, big colonies. If I had more room, I would, you know, let them grow out even bigger. But we can say frag from frags. But to give you an idea, like this Alveopora species there, mm -hmm. that's been with us around about seven years. Um, I might be able to show you one that are, uh, mm -hmm. that is, they're really it's established. So, I do this. so like, if I just take that, for example, there, mm -hmm. you, you'll be able to see how grown out they are. So they, you know, oh, wow. they're encrusting all over. <laughs> so we'll take that plug and then we might split that three times. Right. Yeah, and then start them off again, like you can see the little ones there. These neon green leather corals, we're starting to move more towards soft corals because we think with the advent of the energy crisis, people mm -hmm. are not lighting their tanks like they were. They're yeah. not, you know, and also the investment into a, a sort of aquarium mm -hmm. has dropped, yep. obviously. Yeah. So we're looking at more soft corals these days, perhaps more than, it's how I started funny enough, with soft corals, soft so, corals. and then moved into SPS corals predominantly, but now we're focusing more on, you know, what we think the future is, which will be soft corals predominantly, and yeah. uh, LPS corals, but hardy ones. That for a soft yeah. coral is yeah. so, so pretty yeah. Yeah, in colour as well. That's an original, that was actually, from, the original mother colony was actually from a, a TMC, but that was an Aussie green pollock one oh, it's so pretty. and that was about five years ago and all we do we just keep chopping it yeah and let it fall to the bottom and then yeah. we'll take the little rocks and then mount them from there uh, these are hydnophora a lot of unusual hydnophora mm -hmm. and these extremely uh, rare these are these have been in the uk i think for about 15 or 20 years they're wow. the branching bubble coral so they're not like normal encrusting bubbles yeah and that's a real first for us. That's a slipper coral that we've been cutting up into small pieces, smaller and smaller pieces. And we've been quite successful with uh, fragging those. Oh, wow. Yeah. So these are really just our sort of mainstay hardy SPS frags. Some of them are multi-generational. Some of them are recent cuts. So there's a mixture of both in here. But you know, the barley slime is a classic. It's been in the UK about 20 years, that one. And again, we use that frag there, for example, yeah. to take smaller frags from. It's so that we've got the space. We're having to do it on a sort of mini scale. Mm -hmm. But in an ideal world, if I had the space, I would grow every single one out, you know. <laughs> Just keep going. But yeah, wow. so they're on there. And then in here, it's where we perhaps keep some of our more sort of exclusive frags and uh, also some first cuts as well. So at the moment uh, short cakes are really expensive yeah you know in order to keep the price right for the hobbyist then we'll frag down some of the short cakes but also mm -hmm. keep some colonies so that people if they want to buy a colony they can the option too. Um, but again some of these are uh, i mean there's a it's one everyone loves that we wow. do and that's like a sort of semi graft i wouldn't say it's the you know a, a, the best graft but we've got a watermelon and a bugatti uh, chalice that we've been sort of grafting together there so and then the AAC sourberry which is there's some bigger colonies I'll show you in another oh, table wow. um, and this is another one actually that Dan and I do which is like an avatar which is very common mm -hmm. Indonesia but this chalice came from Malaysia and these two are completely grafting yet we're not even sure they're the same animal but they still you can see there is no war no, taking no war and you can see again this is how we start so these are the mothers again yeah and then we'll cut one of them down and then start to produce more and more 
frags from that. Uh, that's really a coral dumping ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really. That's you know, you always end up with. Though, yeah, know it's a dumping yeah. ground. It's a sort of rock pool effect, if you like. But yeah. that's where, you know, if we've got some, it's not quite well. Every shot will get the coral that might go sick. Or, yeah, of course. And well, so Dan will bring it into from the store if it's a, and then dip it and fragment it and hopefully rescue it. So that's how, yeah, if you like, a cool. coral hospital yeah. stroke dumping ground. <laughs> okay, that one. So in here, we generally just keep things that we're working on, you know, new new varieties, old varieties. There's some that have not seen the store yet, like this crazy pink and gold and purple favetis, you know, that I've never seen another one like that. Yeah. Uh, there's some sort of new ones coming through as well at the moment, favetis or favia with uh, sort of camouflage look on them. Yeah. But this is a new one that we've recently done, which customers have been begging us for, which is like a glitter. Uh, chalice you wow. can probably just just make the glitter out yeah. on that and you can see the frags there oh, and we'll, wow. we'll never release a frag until we're happy that he's healed yeah. some of them look like they might have bleached a little which mm -hmm. is quite normal yeah um with with those he's very very temperamental with light mm -hmm. um, some corals are not in so much popular demand but they're still really rare yeah like this uh, patchy serif type uh coral here you know, it's, it's, it's pretty, but believe it or not, when it's on a plug, mm -hmm. it's because it's one solid colour. Yeah. Not, not many people go for no. single coloration. So this is where we keep a lot of our SPS mother colonies. We don't have loads because, mm -hmm. as I said, we're part aquaculture. We do a little bit, yeah. but for the demand, we'd never keep up, to mm -hmm. be honest with you. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest problem. If you do aquaculture properly, mm -hmm. you need such a vast space. Yeah. And there's a very much, there's a complete difference between you know, the idea of fragging corals for sale, mm -hmm. yeah, or doing proper aquaculture. And that's yeah. one of the reasons why I visit the States on and off, mm -hmm. because that's where a lot of that inspiration comes from. The idea will be long term that AAC moves towards doing more mm -hmm. aquaculture, mm -hmm. um, so that there are really hardy specimens available yeah. in the UK. But some of it, it's not all flash. There's, you know, like I said, there's the barley slimer we still hang on to there. Yeah. Um, there's a few sort of t uh, bird's nest species uh, over on the top over there, um, and it's, it's just mixed between Gonopora. Um, there's uh, some other nice pieces and chalice corals and things that we keep in there. Yeah. I just wanted to take a second to slow down this footage and say how absolutely breathtaking this whole room was. From the sheer amount of corals that they are aquaculturing to the coral hospital, it's truly inspiring. We also keep a quarantine or an isolation facility. We, we don't like to use the words quarantine because mm -hmm. I've always believe that if you're doing a proper quarantine on fish mm -hmm. you know you really you should be looking at around about three months yeah um, to do full you know and, and even that wouldn't include some bacterial or intestinal issues with with the fish mm -hmm. but we do what we can yeah so if we do have an import coming or the species which is uh, De delicate or whatever then we'll make sure that that animal's feeding and rested properly and mm -hmm. treated beforehand mm -hmm. we do try and deal with any intestinal worms or external worms where we can mm -hmm. but um, that's why i said it's uh, it's impossible really to do full quarantine in in you know in what most hobbies would think would be a month yeah it will take far longer especially if you're looking at things like bacterial issues mm -hmm. so that's why we do still encourage the idea that hobbyists look into the idea of quarantining their fish. Mm -hmm. But what we really hope is we take most of that hard work out of it for them. Yeah. So, you know, some of these fish will come in at a certain, you know, we can't keep them under a, a certain level of copper as mm -hmm. well. That's another issue that we've got. So there's only so much that we can do. Mm -hmm. But even if a hobby is just invests into a basic isolation aquarium, you know, we've very little uh, basic forms of that, that's going to be far better for your aquarium yeah that's everything from me today at tropical marine center thank you very much for everyone that's watched this video right until the very end and i hope you have enjoyed it as much as i did filming it now if you are wanting to be reminded of future videos don't forget you can click the notification bell above and you can click the subscribe button as well if you haven't already that is um, in the description bar below you'll find the link to our website where you can check stock of any of our items as well and also links to our other social media platforms thank you everyone and i'll see you in the next one